Hi guys, it's Joe, and in this video I'm going to be showing you another free plugin. And this is Camel Crusher by Camel Audio. And on this we have a distortion, a filter, and a compressor. And when you use them all together you can get some really cool and interesting results. I'll be demonstrating how to use this just on a MIDI bass I put in on Massive, as you tend to use this on lower sounds such as basses and even kicks. You can of course use it on whatever you want, but this is just what I tend to use it on. So I'll just walk you through all the parameters and show you how they work. So first of all is we actually have a couple of presets up here, which is always really useful to have. And then we've got a randomized button, but I'll be going into that a bit more later. So first of all, actually I'll show you what this bass sounds like on its own without any processing. So quite standard, but still quite thick and deep already. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna turn on this distortion so we can use it. And then we've got these two different types here that we'll be using. So we've got a tube distortion, which is quite a warm and soft distortion. And then we've got a mech, which is much more aggressive and in your face. So I'm just gonna hit play and we're gonna slowly start to bring in this tube. So you can hear when we're about here, about 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock, it sounds quite soft, it sounds quite nice, but then when we push it all the way up, then it starts to sound quite, not aggressive, but certainly more obvious, definitely more obvious. So I'm just gonna turn that off, and then we're gonna start to bring in the mech to see how that sounds. So straight away, you can already hear it quite obviously. So as I said, this is very much in your face and gives it a lot of drive. But when used together with the tube, you can get some cool results. As they're complementing one another. Uh, next we have this filter. And what this essentially is, is an EQ. So it's a low pass filter. So it'll be taking out all of the high end. Starting here, we hit, this, is, this is our high end on the right. So this is essentially our 20,000 Hertz. And then on the left is 20 Hertz or thereabouts. So what we can use this for is to just take out quite a lot of our high end. As I said, it's mostly used for low end instruments. And this is one of the reasons why. So I'll just switch that on. I'm just gonna turn the resonance off as well. I'll get to that in a second. And we're just gonna to start to bring this in. So you can hear it's become quite subby now because we've got rid of all that high end. Just want to keep a little bit of its character in there though, so I'm just going to bring it up a wee bit. So what this would look like on an EQ is this. Just put in our low pass. It wasn't all the way down, it's probably around here or so. So we're just taking out all that high end. Okay, so next we have the resonance. And what this would essentially do is put a small to large EQ boost just before our cutoff. So we'll just start to bring that in. You can hear some of those frequencies getting louder. So it just gives it a bit more power there. And then lastly over here we have our compressor. So we have the amount that we'll be compressing it by, so kind of like the oomph that we'll be giving it, and then fat mode here. But I'll show you that in a second. So I'll just hit play and start to bring the amount in. So you can hear it's got that real drive behind it now, it's become quite large. And now if we play that with fat mode. You can hear it's also kind of distorting it there as well, it's making it even stronger and fatter as it were. So I tend to use that a bit more subtly, so that's a bit much for my liking. I'll just drop it down a little bit like that. And then last of all, we have our master section. And this is really useful because we can blend the mix for our original signal, so just this MIDI, our dry signal, as well as our wet signal that we're producing from all of these. We also just have a standard volume control, which is also quite useful just to control how loud it is. But I'm just gonna switch all these back on and then start to fade in the mix of it. So like this, it'll just be playing our original with no processing because the mix is on zero, but I'll start to fade that in. So 
So you can get some really good results by not even putting it up all the way because then you can keep a blend of both your original and your wet signal. And then the last thing I wanted to talk about was this randomized button, which is really useful. So if you put something in that you want to process, but you're not quite sure what you want to do with it yet, you can hit this randomized button and it will just change it each time. And then you can find something that you quite like and then tweak it. So if anything, I actually quite liked that. kind of giving it a bit of a growl I like that actually so the randomized is really useful for that because it can create situations where you might not necessarily have thought of them or known how to get there at least and then it gives you that power to then play around with it which is really cool so that in essence is how to use camel crusher it's a really cool tool that, as I said I mostly use on basses and kicks but you can use it on whatever you want that's just predominantly what I use it for I don't believe camel audio are actually distributing this anymore you can get it from a few other places I'll put a link in the description for where you can get it from but it is completely free you won't be stealing it from them because they themselves distributed it for free and now others are just distributing it on their behalf so I hope you found this video useful and if you have any questions please leave a comment or contact me via my website thanks a lot for watching cheers